All right, good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, everybody. Hey, everybody, how's it going? Hey, everybody. I'm just getting on my phone so I can make sure I can see the comments this time so I don't just go back and forth all the time, you know? So I just want to make sure everybody can see us. Everything is going well. We got Q that just got on. I'm going to keep on using my phone for a second just so I can get on to the live. And I see you. And so everything is going great. Hey, Lori. I see Lori is there. Hey, Lori. Hey, Lori. So, um, hey, everybody. So, of course, how you doing? <laughs> Tell me how you doing tonight. It's Friday. It's the end of the week. We coming into the holiday. Um, just rounding out, you know, the close of the year in terms of business. I've got about two weeks off in terms of tutoring and homeschooling. So just kind of trying to wind down from the whole year is where I am right now. What about you? I ain't gonna lie. Um, it's been pretty rough. <laughs> It's been um, pretty rough. This week has been rough um, for several different reasons. And one of the main reasons why, um, I can't lie, it's just been one thing after another. And it does seem like every time, maybe you can help me with this. It seems like every time you're close to what your purpose to do, it seems like everything, everything in hell's gate comes at you, you know? Absolutely, yes. And I find myself like struggling to kind of just maintain a little bit. Okay. So that's where I am. So I'll say this. Um, anytime you know that, well, anytime there's, opposition to what you're doing that's confirmation that you're on the right track because here's the thing and this is for the spiritual if you're not then just just roll with it anyway so here's the thing the devil ain't trying to stop nobody who ain't going on the right track right <laughs> he ain't gonna bother you if you're doing bad doing dirty doing ugly all that kind of stuff that's exactly what he wants you to do so he's not going to tap into or try to halt anything that you're doing but when you're on the right track and you're walking into your purpose, then there's going to be everything that comes at you um, at that time because that's the devil wanting to stop you from that purpose. So sometimes what you got to do is you all, you got to recognize where that opposition is coming from. You know, you got to always have your war clothes on. <laughs> be ready to be in battle and always be ready to fight the devil. Like just, flat out you have to be ready to fight the you got to be ready to fight them and you know of course there are days where we I ain't got no fight in me i'm tired um i'm exhausted i'm always fighting i'm tired of fighting and then that's when again this is for the spiritual that's when you lean on your strength right um there are people and sometimes it's not the people who we think we want it to be but there are people who are destined to help you in any situation that you're going through. And I've learned this year that there is no situation that someone hasn't gone through. So no situation is ever that unique to the point where it's never happened to anyone, right? Yeah. I definitely so, I definitely get what yeah. you're saying. Um mm -hmm. I think that I'm at a place, oh before I go, your curls are on point tonight. <laughs> my hair. <laughs> right before we came on, I was like, oh, you just seen me about an hour. <laughs> That's like, I'm sitting there talking, and I'm like, yes, yeah, she, she got that extra soul glow in there. But um, yes. I think me and you were talking about it. Um, I love you too, Lori. Thank you so much. And my cousin Miko is on. Hey, Miko, I love you. Um, I was telling you um, just last night. Sometimes I wish like I had another me not to do everything, 
but another me to love on me like I love on everybody else. Do you ever feel like that? I do definitely feel like I wish people would be more like me or treat me like I treat them. That reciprocity thing. Um, and like I told you last night, my husband always tells me, everybody ain't like you. So we have to stop expecting people to be like us and just expect him to be, we have to expect him to be like them. And so we have to be able to take only what they can give us. They can't give us, sometimes we think we need X, Y, Z from certain people. And what I found over the past couple of years is I'm wrong almost all the time about who I think I need what from. You get what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I'm thinking, well, I want, the, oh no, it's not even that. It's who we want to get things from. Oh, I want this person because I've done this for this person. And I want this person and that person and that person to be able to do this for me because I did this for them. But that not that may not be their calling to assist you. There are there might it might be a stranger, it might be someone else that can assist you with whatever it is that you're going through. So a lot of times we start getting down because the people who we expect to be there for us aren't there for us. And so we just like, well dang, I ain't got nobody. And that's another false pretense that's going on in our heads. We have people, but when we say I ain't got nobody, we're talking about the people that I want to be right here, right now, ain't here. So in my mind, I have no one. Um, I definitely can get with what you're saying. And I will say this. I don't even put an expectation on people. Um, one of the things that I do believe that is true, and my mom raised me this way, um, she's always said, if you expect people to be people, you'll never be um, disappointed. So I definitely don't have the expectation that um, people will be like me or people will meet my expectation because they're not obligated to do so. But what I am saying, it would be refreshing to encounter mm -hmm. someone who would love on me and when I say love on me, support me, push me, talk to me, um, advise me the way that I love on others. And so sometimes it does get a little draining when we talk about I don't have anybody. It's not about not having anybody as much as it's about feeling alone. Because, yeah, you know yeah. you have people. But in the same regard, you feel alone like there's no one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. The other thing is, and you talk about this a lot, is we are all unique. So you can't be replicated. So no, there's no one that is going to do what you do for you. They're going to do what they do for you. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, it makes, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. And I definitely agree with you um, 120%. So how do we get from out of our feelings then? You know, how do you get out of your feelings of wanting that want that you 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 want someone to do and to replicate to a certain extent um, what you do for them for you? Um, you know, how do we kind of get out of our feelings? Because you're saying I get it, but you're still feeling like I still want it though. Yeah, um, I will say the thing about feelings. If we're a hundred percent honest, sometimes. Um, it's not about being in your feelings as much as it is about processing what you're going through. And I think that sometimes we do need to process. And mm -hmm. I don't think it's about finding a solution as much as it being true to, you know what, I always deny myself when I'm feeling this way. And I'm not going to deny myself anymore. So let me really say, no, I need someone i need that extra type of love i need that mm -hmm. you know what it is i don't need to feel like i'm prompting someone to do something i want it to be a natural flow i want it to be fluent i want it to be impulsive um sometimes yeah. matching my same impulse if that makes sense um gotcha. Lori, Lori, i know i can call on you anytime and my cousin miko is saying right cuz but go ahead <laughs> so um you know i felt that way for years. Like I'm always giving to people. I'm always calling and hey, how you doing? And you know, I went through a time where I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna stop calling folks and just be 
is somebody just going to pick up the phone and call me? Is somebody going to say, hey, girl, you all right? I haven't heard from you or whatever. And it didn't happen. <laughs> I'm laughing now because I'm healed from it. But it hurt. It hurt bad. I mean, folks didn't even realize I had literally just kind of dropped off the face of the earth. You know what I'm saying? Um, there were a couple people on Facebook that messaged me and said, hey, I haven't seen you in a while. Is everything okay? But the people that I wanted to notice, they didn't notice. And you know what, though? I guess it goes to this thing, too. You must got your phone on or something, too. Who, me? Uh -uh. Yeah, it's a reverb I'm getting somewhere. But um, I will say this. I understand role and position. So if you played a certain role and you change, you can't get mad at everybody else for staying the same. And so I know that I am considered, quote unquote, the strong one, which I hate. I hate, I hate, I hate. I did a live about that. Um, I know I'm perceived as the one um, that seemed to be well kept at, in regards to emotions, vision, dreams, stuff like that. But the truth mm -hmm. of the matter is I get tired sometimes too. And it's weird when you tell, like my little brother said something that was so true. I called my little brother one time and I was telling him how down I was. And mm -hmm. um, he said something that was quite phenomenal. He said, the reason why I don't know how to help you is because you're the one that I always go to when I need help. So it's not that he doesn't want to help. It's more of, mm -hmm. wow, um, what do I do? Because the roles have shifted and that thing that is familiar is different. So I get how, how um, changing certain things can interrupt something. But at the same time, it would be great to experience an unexpected, quote unquote, blessing, an unexpected person to come in and love on you the way that you love on other people because you don't want it to seem like you don't like loving people. It's like education. It's not like you don't like educating and equipping our youth, mm -hmm. but it would be great instead of petitioning and, um, and um, corralling parents and adults to give in, it would be great if somebody knocked on your door and said, Aquarius, how can we help um, your tutoring service? You'd be like, yeah. what? Yeah, we want to just volunteer and help reach a thousand children. You'd be like, oh, oh, I don't, we don't want your money. We don't want any of that. We just want to just help you with your vision. But here's the thing. Those things happen because I've had things similar to that happen where it's like, wow, okay. Um, but it's not going to be on our timing. It's going to be on the natural pace of things in terms of timing. And so I think that's where we kind of get a little confused. But I will say this, um, the only thing we can do is communicate our needs. And I think sometimes we, yeah, I want people to call and check on me. Yeah, I want people to say things. There's, there's a couple people who do that. And so I'm learning not to just take that for granted and just go with what I got. My best friend, like today, she hadn't heard from me. I've been slow responding. And she was like, uh, hello, ma'am. I ain't heard from you in like two days. What's going on? And I'm like, oh, but I did text you earlier this morning. It was late, but I did, you know. So uh -huh. I'm learning uh -huh. to just kind of, yeah, I ain't got 20 people calling to check on me, but I got one. And then the other person that does this is one of my former students. When I first started teaching, she became my daughter. And um. From that point on, and mind you, I've been teaching uh, for 14 years now. So for 14 years, or even now, she'll call. If, if no one else calls me, I know that at some point she's going to call. Hey, Ma, what you doing? Oh, I, ain't, I just called to talk to see how you and Dad are doing, you know, or whatever. And so I'm learning to just take what I can get. It may not be when I want it. It may not be from who I want it to be from, or I may want more than just those two, but that's what I get. And so I'm just learning to just be okay with that. But at the same time with, you know, even with my husband going through um, what he went through a couple months ago, I just learned that I just had to reach out and say, hey, look, y'all need to call him. 
He needs people in his corner. And when I say there were people that corralled around him, but they didn't know, you know what I'm saying? They didn't know. But I had to make sure that I picked people or that I called on people that I knew would be consistent. Because what you don't want is an inconsistent person coming in to try to help someone that's already broken, so to speak, quote unquote broken. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. what? At the end of the day, Jeremy, Jay, Dwayne, whatever you want to be called. Just put my whole government out there, Aquarius. <laughs> Um, but at the end of the day, the only thing you can do is just communicate what your needs are. We, we're not going to get, I've just come to the conclusion, you're not going to get what you want. But when you do, be, you're going to be pleasantly surprised. I'm not, I'm not going to say it's impossible that there's not going to be somebody that is going to be out the blue like, hey, man, you were on my mind and I want to call you. But what I'm saying is put it out there and just, hey, and at the end of the day, you can't say he didn't tell you he needed people. Yeah, I got a question for you. Um, do you think that, like, for instance, like you said, your it was a point where your husband needed, um, needed that extra loving. Mm -hmm. Does that bother you, um, or how? N not even bother you. Like, how do you process that when the one who is from a social construct or from a stereotypical standpoint should be the strong one is now needing or is now vulnerable to needing a little extra love or extra encouragement, extra motivation. Like what is the process as a woman and as a wife, what goes through your mind in that moment? Is it quickly going to survival mode or do you have to get yourself together to help somebody else? Um, for me, it's quickly going into survival mode. Um, I've learned to um, compartmentalize. So when somebody needs me, I'm in like superhero she woman mode, like literally. And it's just like, all right, thinking, okay, what can we do? Blah, 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 blah. But even in his moment, there was a time where I, me, the one with all the answers, did not know what to do. And all I could do was pick up the phone and just call people. I called his mom, I called his dad, I called his brother, I called his cousins, and I'm like, look, I don't know what to do. Um, but being in the limelight as he is, being a DJ, um, at the same time, he still don't really have a lot of friends. Yeah, I definitely agree with that because um, I'm kind of his enemy. Oh, <laughs> which is a great time to tell everybody um, one of the things that's going to be happening with this actual show, we actually have been um, propositioned to actually start a radio show in addition to this live. And this is actually a great opportunity for us. So the formatting for a lot of this will change a little bit. One of the things that I'm most excited about is we're going to get our little theme music. Yay! Yay. Um, but the other thing is we will um, be taking breaks and things like that um, to acknowledge our sponsors and things like that. So the formatting of She Said, He Said will be changing. So I'm definitely excited about that. Um, but going back to that is that let's not talk about the things that are so quote unquote cliche or traditional sometimes. Like, yeah, I understand that I may not get what I want, but it doesn't take away the fact that I want what I want. Right. That, yeah. that it doesn't take away the fact, yeah, I understand that I need to reach out, but what about the times I don't want to reach out and I want somebody to just read my mind and say, Jay need me and be there. Why do I have to do that? Because truth be told, a lot of times when people need me, I don't wait for them to call or wait for them to say, Jay, I need you. Something mm -hmm. in there, something in me says, you know what? Aquarius behavior has changed a little bit. You good? Yeah. Um, so it's like, so what do you do when I understand in all practicality and all rationality that things um, work a certain way, but it still doesn't take away the frustration. It still doesn't take away the angst. It still doesn't yeah. take away the anxiety. It still doesn't take away the stress. It still doesn't take away the worrying. It doesn't take away all the things that I feel like I need sometimes, even though I understand it's practical, you know? 
And yeah, I listen, I went through all of that. I went through all of that. And you know what? It just it just caused me more frustration. <laughs> I'ma just be honest with you. <laughs> it just caused more frustration because at the end of the day, I still didn't get it. So I just went through all this, this whole field of emotions. And I went through it for years. You hear me? Right. I went through it for years. Literally, practically just torturing myself. Well, why can't they just do this? Um, I'm always there for everybody else. Even coming home. Like, I <laughs> dread it and regret it coming home to Augusta. Because I'm like, why I always got to come? Why, why can't nobody come visit me? You know? I, the distance is exactly the same. Going and coming. You just get on 20. You know? Um, so, but again, at the end of the day, and yes, you get you go through all those feelings and emotions. I can honestly say from my personal experience, it still didn't change anything. Yeah. It absolutely yeah. did not change anything. I communicated it. I was mad. I was angry. I was sad. I was hurt. I went through the whole field of emotions. And then I just got to the point where I then I got to the, oh, I don't even give two shits now. You know what I'm saying? You know, when you get there, like, I don't care. <laughs> F you, F you, F you, who's next? You know what I'm saying? Um, so I went through the whole field of things. And then I just finally had to just, you know what? I have to accept what I have, period. I have to accept who I have, who's going to check on me. Them same two people that's been checking on me, you know, all these years. And if I don't get this person or that person or whatever, um, you're either going to decide to continue doing things for people or you're going to decide to stop. And again, I've done both. I've just said, y'all ain't helping nobody. I'm going to stop and stop being that help person. I ain't calling nobody no more. I ain't doing this. I ain't doing that. Blah, 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 blah. I went into a shell. They still ain't noticed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Like, I can laugh about it now, but oh my God, that was such a painful moment in my life. Like, feeling alone. And like you said, like, being lonely and feeling alone is really painful to go through it. And like, I ain't got nobody. But like <laughs> I said, at the end of the day, it didn't change nothing. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely get what you're saying. But I honestly tell you this. Um, it's like it's a double-edged sword. Like, I will never treat people like people treat me. Um, and I can't do it. Like, I've tried to be mean. That junk just don't work. It ain't natural for me. Um, mm -hmm. So how do you, like, what are some tips that you do, like, when you're at that moment? Like, I remember last night I called you. But right before I called you, I spent a good 10 minutes just driving down the road screaming. I was like, ah! <laughs> I, because sometimes it's just about getting that frustration out. And, um... Don't keep talking. I'm trying to mute my phone. Y'all, Aquarius be having technical issues all night. <laughs> <laughs> never mind. Never mind. I was just, never mind. Okay, Look, go ahead. She, she an educator and then get, <laughs> and get and be like a deer in headlights when it's time for technology. But uh, I'm not tech savvy at all, but it's okay. But yeah, it's, it's okay, like it's like sometimes you just need that. You need that moment to get it out there. Get that moment to just not have it together. And and it frustrates me sometimes when people come back. When even when I do communicate, like, hey, I'm having a rough moment. They're like, you'll be okay. You always be okay. Don't don't yeah. say that. Don't 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 say yeah. that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they'll yeah. say, like, you know, you'll bounce back. Don't don't no, just 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 go away. <laughs> you know what? Um, what I had to learn was I had to allow myself to be quote unquote weak. Um, because we are deemed this the strong ones. And like you say, yeah, they're always, oh, well, you strong, you'll bounce back, or blah, 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 blah. And I just, you know what? No, nope, not today. I'm not. I'm I'm choosing not to bounce back today. I'm choosing to just be in this and because I'm human. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I call myself and we act like we're superhuman and this and that and all that kind of stuff. But today, I'm just going to be regular old human with this flaw right now. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I can be in this moment because I've got nothing left in me. I have poured everything out 
to everyone else. I have poured everything out and I've got nothing. And if somebody don't pour nothing in me, then I'm just going to be sitting here as an empty vessel today. <laughs> and that's perfectly okay because we're human. You know, we have to allow ourselves that. We have to allow ourselves to cry. We have to allow ourselves to be vulnerable. We have to allow ourselves to be quote unquote weak. Um, you know, and that's okay. As long as it doesn't continue over a long period of time, because, you know, that can be detrimental to us. But um, in the meantime, it's, it's perfectly okay. It's perfectly okay. That's human. That's natural. Okay. Well, Aquarius, we did get um, some, we did get some topics from, so, well, some suggestions of things that people would like for us to discuss. And so I do want to go over some of those with you. Um, one of them was breaking down stereotypes of who makes the first move in the dating world. Um, I think because both of us have been off the market for like over a decade. Yeah. yeah, we don't have too much to give on that one. But if you are a we single person, people. huh? I was going to say, yeah, we can invite guests on to talk about it. Yeah, if you are a single person and you know, like, to be honest, I have always liked people who go against stereotypes. You know, um, people who don't let things um, define them. But if you are a person who is single right now, you're in the dating market, and you are tired of the stereotypes, let us know so we definitely could reach out um, to you, and you can give us your take on it because, truth be told, we don't even know. I have no clue. I, I don't know what the dating game is like out there. I have been uh, in a relationship with my husband since I was 19 years old. So I don't know. Since I was a teen, I have been with him, so I don't really know what. It's been since you've been nineteen, like. Aquarius. Uh huh. That long? Mm hmm. Great day. Yeah, you don't know nothing. I don't know nothing. <laughs> I got nothing on that topic. But Kiki again, stole your you. Now you now you just us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mr. CG said, let me know when you're ready for me. Okay, well we if you want to touch on that topic, then by all means. So you know what? So for she said, he said for that topic, we need a single male and a single female. Right. I echo that. Yep, we need them. So let me look at um. Let me see what the other ones were. One was um your type. What it means in the tw um in the two thousands. Well, no, what it means in the twenties versus the thirties. Did you have a type? Well, first of all, guys, y'all just heard this girl. She didn't have a type in her twenties because she ain't make it. <laughs> <laughs> She ain't making it. He been... Again, I'm sorry, I got that. Um, <laughs> uh, I guess my type was older men. <laughs> you know, he's 10 years older than me. So my type. But what I do find is at a younger age, we do like older men. And my thought process, and we'll go into that deeper if we touch on it. My thought process for that was, you subtract about five to seven years off of a, off of a man's age, and that's their maturity level. That was my formula. So basically, you were saying all the other nineteen year olds were stupid because they were twelve, and no. so you you had to get with a twenty nine year old who was really twenty two, and that age difference wasn't that bad. Now you talking? I call bull, bull on the court, bull on the court. <laughs> <laughs> it worked out. It worked out. But look, Kiki on here, and he's talking about um, leave my baby alone. I didn't steal her. She stole me. I guess that proved a point. He was seven years younger in age. <laughs> he thought you stole him. <laughs> but I will say this, Aquarius. I remember um, right before I, I, I laid eyes on my wife, I did have this list of the, the perfect type quote unquote female that I wanted and I remember right before my wife I was dating this young lady 
Um, everything on paper was perfect, but there was no chemistry. There was nothing. Um, and when I met my wife the very first day, the very first day, September 25th, 2007, when I laid eyes on my wife, I knew she was my wife. Less than two months later, I proposed to her. Less than a year of meeting her, we were married. You know, um, so I don't believe like, yeah, like a type. I don't even believe in a type after me and my wife. I believe that it's just compatibility, meaning you know, you know, and you don't know. I think some people don't know, but they don't like the idea of being quote unquote alone or the idea of going against the traditional norms. Um, and I think a lot of times we waste each other's time. And I think about there were several um, females time that I wasted. Um, and I'm regretful of that because I already knew. I remember I was engaged. I was engaged twice before my wife. And, um, mm -hmm. both, and both times um, when we would have conversations about engagement, I always said, like, you are a great girlfriend. I just don't see myself with you. I don't see myself married. I don't see myself having children. And um, I should have just cut it off. But in my mind, my immature mind, I was thinking like, well, it's not like anything is wrong. So why call it off? How old were you? <laughs> Let me see if my science works. <laughs> How old was I when? Because you said, I guess I wasn't mature enough. So well, the first time that I was engaged, I was 17. You didn't know that. Okay, so you have to track five to seven years. So, yeah, you weren't ready. And then the second time that I was engaged, I was 21, 22. 21, 22, 23. Um, it was that whole span. And science is right. <laughs> but here's the thing, though, Aquarius. All of them were older. Hmm. We're gonna have to talk about that. <laughs> That's what we're gonna have to talk about. Write that one down. <laughs> like, now hold on. Siobhan says sometimes people don't know how to be there for others. I am one who oh wait, it done moved. Let me see. <laughs> I am one who have been on both ends of the stick. Everyone has a busy life, but always put time in before you be wishing you did before it is too late. That is true. I have a few people I text daily and who text me. It is always a blessing to be a blessing to others. Sometimes just a two minute phone call makes a difference. Absolutely. So I think um, what I started to do was, you know what, if I feel like calling somebody, I'm just going to call them. I'm not going to go into the, well, you know, I ain't heard from them and they ain't called me, so I ain't calling them. You know, if I just feel like calling you, if you're on my mind, I'm going to call you, I'm going to text you, whatever the case may be. If you respond, you respond. If you don't, you don't. But I did, I fulfilled my end of the bargain, so to speak, by, you know, kind of doing what I felt in the moment to do. <laughs> and then um, you got some, you got some more going on in there. You got. Of course, I just wish you'd get your um echoes now. Y'all forgive. I don't hear any echoes. I just hear so it. It just sounds horrible. But um let me see. Like I don't have anything going on. I'm sorry, but I don't hear anything. Well Cordell said that your science is un um substantiated pseudoscience. And I concur. <laughs> I concur with that. You talking about but it was a decade over ago. Um let me see. Your husband said, just minding my own business. Yep, he was minding his own business, and you come in and just mess things up for him. Mm -hmm. And then Siobhan said, amen, with no type. And then your husband came back with same here. When I first saw her, I told my best friend, that's my wife. Oh, that's pretty dope. And then Corey mm -hmm. Hyde said, this is one of my favorite people, real talk. Salute Tina, downright good dude always generating positivity growth i've never heard him indulge in a useless conversation i guess he meant me but he's probably typing texting on a roll corey you better not be texting and driving tell him aquarius tell him uh use the voice text <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i will say this it's like um i had a conversation because and I guess you know this, being an entrepreneur and being basically a servant, like we basically made this vow to serve others. 
one of the things about servants is it's hard to keep lasting relationships because a lot of people who come in your life is usually to fulfill a need, um, fill a void, and then they move on. So I've become a revolving door. And I, I always tell people this, it's okay to be a revolving door, just don't be a doormat. So I know that a lot of people who are coming into my life are coming in for seasons and then I may not see them again. The only problem that I have sometimes is that I do develop certain bonds with them. And you know, it's just like, like you talk about your children. I remember it's certain students. I was like, I really wish that I could keep them back because I don't want them to graduate because I enjoyed mm -hmm. them that much. Um, it's certain people that I grew connection with. I just told Cordell today, like, my fear is because I really see the potential in him and I see the greatness in him and he's really become like a little brother. But my fear is it's only a short period of time because I have no control over that. And then he's going to move on because the guy is a dynamic guy. And usually that's what happens in my life where we help people, we develop this bond, they get to a certain place and they have to move on. They have to move on, and I'm never going to hold you back. But it still doesn't take away the fact you like, dog, I really miss that person. And, yeah, you call them every now and then, and you check on them, but it is different when you saw them every day, you work with them every day, um, you develop and you forge bonds every day. Mm -hmm. So it does get a little exhausting sometimes being a servant. And I will say that's one bonus about being married is, like, it does make me feel good to know that at the end of the day, my wife is going to be here. You got at least one person that's staying, right? <laughs> yeah, that lets you know how crazy she is. But yeah, I got one person that's staying. <laughs> um, no, I I completely get that. I completely understand that because I was, and that's why I texted you the other day um, for a topic about, you know, relationships. Is it based off of need or is it based off of love? Because I have someone that I consider a friend and, um, you know, for the past couple of years, we've been kind of here, there, you know, helping one another. But um, over the past couple of months, it's just been kind of like, hey, girl, you all right? I ain't heard from you. Is everything OK? And then, like, I'm not getting a response. So it's just kind of like, so is that part where, oh, you don't need me anymore? So you done moved on? Like, or, you know, so. Uh -huh. I just need to understand things. So I can, like, do I detach right now or do I wait? You know, like, I, I'm i so sick of being a revolving door. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's like, can I just keep all my really good friends that ain't going nowhere are not here? No, can I tell you my science on that? I have a science. Okay, tell me your science. My science is too much positive energy can't be in the same place or something will happen like an explosion. So I think that once people um, develop their pure light, I think that they have to separate to spread that light around the world and they can't be in a concentrated place too long. Hmm. That's a good one. That's a good one. I can dig that. Okay. We, go ahead. How do we, so how do I move on from it? You just suck like it up. Getting, so how do you not get hurt by it? Is you it just suck it up, Aquarius, like you told me earlier. And just take what you can that, take. <laughs> I didn't say that, sir. And I didn't say it that way. Like, I don't really, like, I was very delicate with you. <laughs> and, you're mean, and then you're just going to basically tell me in that tone that you know, to suck it up. I don't appreciate that. That's reciprocity. You know what I'm saying? See, I need somebody to treat me. I just treated you. And regardless of what you say, that's that's how I heard it. Like suck it up and move on. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think that what do, what helps me, um, for instance, I have real good friends. Um, we develop these bonds and then we spread out. I have a real good friend in California. You know what I mean? I have some real good friends throughout. Like I have a real good friend. We're going to go see um, next week in Orlando. So the beauty of it is you see these beautiful seeds spread it out, but it does suck that we all can't be in the same city together. Yeah. But then it makes traveling more exciting 
because I um I have friends almost in every state. And so it's a beautiful thing to have people throughout the state, but it also gives you a, a, a different lens, like at the world. Like when I'm traveling, now when I go down 95, it's not like, oh, I'm just going to Orlando. I'm going to mm -hmm. see my friend. Or it's not just I'm going to Jacksonville. I'm going to see my brother-in-law. And I'm going, it's memories. It's trails of great memories that I yeah. do like more than anything. So that does help. It just sucks when they're not here when you want to just talk to them face to face. Right, right, right. Let's see. So I'm, you know, <laughs> Kiki and I, um, for those of you who don't know, that's my husband's name. So Kiki and I, we used to have this thing where every time we would meet a couple, we'd be like, so they're going to be our friends. <laughs> we, we were so like couple friend thirsty. Every couple we met that we clicked with was like, oh, yeah, let's hang out with them. Are they going to be the next friend? Let's invite them over. Like, really needy because we just needed people. And you know what? We get, the, we get the opposite. Like, every single friend I get, they end up getting married. We be like, dog it. We get everybody married. And they move on. Like, we make some great friendships. They just get married and move on. So we're the opposite. We like, hold on. Can we find somebody already married? Or somebody who's single that's going to stay single. So you see, Yeah, we do find married couples. And then we click, the kids click, and we just be like, they're going to be our next best friends. <laughs> and then they leave. <laughs> so um, They leave. Eventually, yes, they leave us. <laughs> well, if anybody's met Kiki, I kind of understand. But um, <laughs> let's see. Cordell said friendships. Here we go. He said, friendships, the positive ones, last and take work, bro. They last, though. I'm not going anywhere, man, unless you start trying to get me to eat <laughs> like cheese. <laughs> what? Shut up. Um, yeah. So let me, I want to comment on that really quick then. So that kind of takes, uh, you know, what we're saying to a different level to a certain extent. So if you're saying, you know, sometimes we just can't be in the same light, you know, shine bright, blah, 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 blah. So they got to move on. But then take what he's saying. A real friendship is going to last. So was it not a real friendship to begin with? Well, let me clarify. I, I, I believe that, um, I believe, can you hear me okay, Aquarius? Now, can you hear me? I can hear you. Did you hear me like this? Okay, I can't hear you now. Okay, I was just playing with this mute button. Because <laughs> I got two of them. I was like, what does this one do? But um, <laughs> if y'all don't know, I do have a thing with pushing buttons. I just keep pushing buttons. Um, Let me clarify. I don't think that we stop being friends. So I definitely don't think that. I think that it's the separation part. Like, it would be great to have the people that you care about closer. And for me, it seemed like once we develop those tight bonds, my wife and I talked about that. Um, for the longest, I said, it, it seemed like anybody that I become close to, we can never live in the same city. Like something will happen. And actually in Columbia, it was the first time that I was the person to move because normally I will become close with someone and they move to another city, another state and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. so. I don't think the friendship ends. I definitely don't believe that. But what I'm saying is it, it, it's great to have people where you don't have to pick up the phone and call. You well, can really drive and go the see them. One. Like all of my long distance friendships. I mean, I've got friends in Texas, Jersey, Philly, D.C. One's about to move to Hawaii, um, you know, so was in Florida. So all of those, those friendships last. We do put in the work. But the local ones. Those are the ones, the ones that are right here in the city, the ones that are 10, 15 minutes away. What's up with those people? Um, What's up with those relationships? Are we just not willing to put in the time? Do Are we taking for granted the closeness? And so we're just not putting in the extra work? Well, um, I'll say this though, Aquarius. I think for a lot of us, we meet people that are in our same in our same state of being sometimes. Meaning like if you are a hustler and you are an entrepreneur, nine times out of 10, your friends that you're gonna meet are entrepreneurs and it's not that they don't want to be there with you, they're hustling and grinding just like you. 
Right. And I think once you move to another level, either like your business flourish, their business flourish, you have to separate because there's more opportunity. But it seems like that heals this friendship. Like you don't like for me, nine times out of 10, I rarely hear from them again, unless I reach out. You get what I'm saying? So then it's just kind of, that's where I'm asking. Like, so was it a friendship? Because again, your friend said, you know, the, the real friendships will be able to would, uh, sustain or withstand, you know, any type of weather. But even leveling up, a real friendship should be able to sustain even leveling up, right? Well, Aquarius, like you said, he's um he's seven years younger than what he actually is. So he's still in his 20s. He don't know. <laughs> but no, no, all jokes aside, though, I think that here's another thing. You know how we talked about types? Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we put labels on things and we have our own definition of what those labels are. Um, mm -hmm. I think that a lot of times they're just relationships. Um, I With think no that label. Yeah, I think that they're just relationships, meaning okay. people came into your life to transfer um, or fulfill a need in that moment. And, like, and, and you are doing the same thing. And I think that for some of them, um, because of their mission or their purpose in life, it may not necessarily be a friendship, but it doesn't mean that it's a severed relationship. Gotcha. So like, gotcha. I remember people saying, well, they're not a friend, they're an associate. No, I think mm -hmm. there are some people who may not be a friend, but not an associate either. I call them like cousins. You know, like you got your siblings, but then you got your cousins, mm -hmm. and you got some cousins that are distant cousins, and you got some cousins that are close, that you're close with, but at the end of the day, you're cousins and we all family. Yeah. I think that some people come in your life as cousins and may not be your first cousin or your second cousin, but they're still there, and they, yeah. mean, they, they mean you no harm. Um, but they can't be that first cousin or that sibling to you like you need, but they're not going anywhere either. And I think, yeah, that makes sense. And I think and something, I think, yeah, uh, go ahead. I think one of the things um, that I did and I learned, I had one of my cousins actually kind of told me this too, was everybody I meet, I'm look, I'm because I'm looking for friends, I've been friend thirsty for a while, but I'm not friend thirsty anymore. I'm comfortable with who I have, but because I was so friend thirsty, I labeled them as friends and I didn't give them the opportunity to earn that right to be called my friend. Okay. Aquarius, how about I'm, I'm going live on the watch too. So we got comments in the live and we got comments on the watch party. So I'm getting it. Um, Let's go. Let's go back a little bit. Karen Jordan said, "People who use you really don't know when you are broken." That's going back to that first mm -hmm. state. She also said, "I hate when people say that you will bounce back. It's like they just don't get to know. They just don't get that you need time." And then she said, "I like guys that look smart." And um, Christopher um, Neil Bailey, who's an, a dynamic actor, said, "Been there." Sean Player said, I had a list too, talking about um, type. And then Stacy, hey Stacy, she said, gives me hope. She said, gives me hope. And then um, Chris said that the list is a trap. Stacy said, yes. Mm. <laughs> She's like, yep, that list is a trap. So Cordell, <laughs> the list is a trap. Um, <laughs> Karen said, I feel the same way. Some people are for a season. And then Chris Neal came back and said, it depends on what the friendship is built on from the jump. Was Ooh. it out of need or want? Karen said, I agree that there is conflict at that point. Kimberly um, Winborn said, I believe God gives us assignments, but at some point assignments must be turned in to go to the mm. next assignment to grow. Ooh, I like that. We get graded and then we grow to the next while the other assignments let me see we grow to the next I'm that because I'm gonna use that. while the other assignment like they become projects which take more development more time more studying more research etc um if we stay stuck on one assignment it will distract us from the bigger project to get the final 
to get the final A. We have to focus on the projects, although the lessons, memories, et cetera, from those assignments stick with us. And then Stacy said, hi, Jay. And then Crystal said, hello there. Hope, yes. So um, it's a lot of stuff. And then Siobhan said in our live, she said, um, real friendships never go anywhere. Yes, you put that label on them too quick. And... And then, of course, you said, I see that now. So you responded to that. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, I definitely want to tell you this. Speaking of seasons, I think our friendship is a great example of a revolving door and, a, and, and, and seasons. Yeah. Um, yeah. We knew each other since second grade. Um, we went through this phase where um, we just were two different people. And then it you was a... Annoying. Let's just put it out there. And you are beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Quares was this snob who knew everything. And she was loud. And, I still do. and she was loud, y'all. She was probably like 4'2 and the loudest thing in the whole school. But, um, <laughs> and then it was a common person that actually brought us together. I remember I used to have to sing for you and stuff like that. <laughs> And then we lost contact. And I remember when you went off to Morris Brown, you were the first person that I thought about with all of that. And then we lost contact again. And then here it is. It comes full circle. And one of the things that I say is that we've been in each other's life through different seasons, but each yeah. season has gotten better. Each season has been beautiful. Yeah. And I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what the next season brings us. Yeah. And I think it's life, it's experiences, it's maturity. Um, also, that helps in, um, you know, smoothing out relationships and, you know, keeping them um, maintained as well. So, you know, the more you know, the more you grow, the more, the, the, the better you do. So I learned how to do better with people. I'm one of those people who um, I'm always going to look within and try to reevaluate and evaluate myself before I do anything else. You know what I'm saying? I'm never just going to be like, well, it was you and you and you. And that's why, uh, before I start doing that, I always kind of look, well, what was my role in it? What did I play? What do I need to learn? I'm always looking for a lesson. I think that's the teacher of me too. Like what's the lesson what I'm supposed to learn from this. And that's why I ask a lot of questions. So I'm asking you like with this particular person did what, what's the lesson? Am I supposed to move on? Blah, 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 blah. Do I be the friend? Do I reach out? You know, all that kind of stuff. So I'm always looking to grow and be a better person. You know, was I a good person to all of the people in my other relationships? If I wasn't, you know, where do I need to grow at? What do I need to improve upon so that when the next person comes into my life, um, you know, I can be different or be who I'm supposed to be for that person and, you know, and vice versa. Um, I definitely agree with you. I think for me, my biggest takeaway is I learned to, um, when, when people talk about accepting them, they say accepting them for who they are, which is great. But um, in the process of accepting you for who you are, you have to know who you are. And, 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 and let's talk about this. Yeah, there are a lot of great characteristics that I have, but there are also a lot of annoying ones that I have also. And mm -hmm. being fully aware, nobody asks you, being fully aware of who you are and what you are in totality will help you form better relationships. Like I always joke with people like I am extremely sarcastic. Before, I spent a lot of time explaining, oh, no, I didn't mean that. But now I know if I offend someone, I'm, I'm quick to say, you know what? That came out wrong. I am sarcastic by default. That's not what I meant. So I can clean it up. Before waiting on mm -hmm. someone to tell me that they were offended, when you kind of know that you've offended somebody and you know your stance. I also know that there were certain boxes that I tried to fit in before because I was ashamed of my gifts and talents. I'm no longer ashamed yeah. of those things. I'm no longer ashamed yeah. of who I am. So if you're going to accept you, you got to accept the good and the bad, but also yeah. um, accept the consequences of both sides of you, of all yeah. sides of you. And if you're okay with it, that means you are okay with the consequences that come with being you. Like, I know that there are going to be a lot of times that I do feel alone, but I know that I'm not alone, but there are going to be yeah. that because I'm a servant. As a love mm -hmm. advocate, I know that a majority of my life will be to take on other people's issues and concerns 
because I do love them and I do care about them. And it may be small moments when I need that and it may not be anyone around, but that doesn't mean I don't have anyone. You know, so it's yeah. a lot about accepting you as a whole. And um, yeah. Cordell said self-awareness is one of the biggest, um, I can't see, is one of the biggest keys of all time. Yeah. And absolutely. then, let's see, Crystal said on the Watch Live, she said, hello there, hope yes. I don't know what you are talking about, but saying hello, passing through, great job, you guys. We'll do a replay. Okay? So Aquarius, mm -hmm. we have made it to our hour, man. Is there anything you want to leave um, for the people? Any last words of motivation and encouragement? Um, so as we encroach upon the holiday season, um, and since we just kind of talked about relationships and that type of thing, um, go ahead and uh, make sure that you are evaluating and reevaluating those particular relationships that you're in. We always do that, my husband and I, at the end of the year. And we just kind of look at our role in it and we look at, you know, um, who, you know, who can move forward in this next season with us and who just kind of needs to stay behind. They haven't put in, you know, anything. And so we're not really going to put in any more or deposit any more because they're, you know, just those toxic ones, those that are just going nowhere to so just reevaluate and evaluate all of your relationships so that as you begin to move into this season and the new season, um, you know who's taking with you, who you're taking with you, who you're going along with this new ride and this new journey in 2019. Okay, and I will add to that. Um, of course, I think that that is phenomenal. And I'll say make every moment a holiday because you don't have to wait to these seasons. Celebrate who you have in your life now. Celebrate the good times. Celebrate the fact that they're there um, because every moment that you have, you will never get that moment back. So enjoy the moment in the moment and be okay with it. And I love you. And if you need someone to talk to, um, you can always reach out to me and any other love advocates. We're always available. Make sure that you like and follow us on all social media platforms. Your likes yeah. help in so many different ways. For one, it gives exposure. For two, it gives us an opportunity to give back to individuals that we may not know. And you may know someone or someone who you're connected to may need to hear our messages. Um, if you have children that are struggling um, academically, be sure to reach out to Aquarius because she ha actually has been in business for 10 years with a thriving tutoring service, and it is virtual as well as online if you're in, I mean, well as face-to-face -face if you're in the Atlanta area. But if not, she can help your child virtually, and it'll feel as if she's there. Um, as always, we're here for you. We're never far away from us. Our inboxes are always open. We're always available. You guys have a wonderful night. We love y'all. All right. Good night. Bye. Good night.